Praise the Lord and good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our afternoon Bible study and evening Bible study at 12 noon and 630. Look, I want to call your attention to a very familiar song to some and if not to others, just if you would just have a worshipful spirit to the Lord and it says, blessed be the name. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, blessed be the name of the Lord, the glories of my God and King. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus, the name that charms our fears. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Tis music in the sinner's ears. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He breaks the power of cancel who sinned. Blessed be the name of the Lord. His blood can make the foul is clean. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. May we give God thanks and praise for this day and hour. May we pray. Eternal Father, we give you thanks and give you praises for another day that you have blessed all of us with. And even though it is a good day, a great day, a blessed day, even in these times, we still can have serious trials and tribulations and even temptations. I ask, O oh, Heavenly Father, that uh, during this moment as we uh, have the middle of August and young people are preparing to return back to school, uh, that you will be with them and educators and administrators, parents and guardians, great parents, as we all take time to uh, prepare our young people for school. But meantime, be with us at this moment as we take time to study your word. In Christ's name, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today, we want to introduce over the next few weeks a biblical concept for our congregation, but at the same time to anyone who is listening would be beneficial for your leadership, home, career, or job. And we're looking at these next 12 months in emphasis on three V's. Three V's. Vision, virtual, and victory. One more time. Vision, virtual, and victory. These are three bedrock components to be helpful to those of us, especially leaders, persons who are over various groups, congregations, families, or even individually looking at how to move certain things forward in your life. I want to bring you to two scriptures as we think about that first V, which is vision. And here again, I know we can put things across the screen, but I want you to do a dynamic of where you're seeing me as well as taking notes. When we think of vision, I want to offer two scriptures 
One is Proverbs chapter 29, and that's verse 18. And then Habakkuk chapter 2, there's an emphasis on um, chapter 2, verse 2, but we're going to look at three verses. Again, Proverbs chapter 29, specifically verse 18. But then we'll say something about verses 15 through 17. And then also Habakkuk chapter 2. We emphasize verse 2, but take time to uh, have an overview of verses 1, 2, and 3. Again, the first V is vision. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 says this. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law is happy is he. Happy is he. Again, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Allow us to say a little something about vision. When we think of vision in a physical way, we think of our eyesight. Many of us have heard about uh, having 20-20 vision. And all it basically means is that the human sense of sight is 100% in place where we can see things up close and we can see things at some relative uh, far distance and, have, and be able to see with some sense of clarity. If at any point our vision is obstructed or we close our eyes, we cannot see, at least physically. And we need to think of physical sight and how also there is spiritual sight, spiritual sight, to be able to see the things that are invisible, uh, to be able to envision things that have not happened as you move toward making them happen. And what Solomon tells us in Proverbs is that where no vision is in place, then people are subject to perish. Now, let's look a little bit more in the scripture. And we'll say some more things about this perishing of individuals where there is no vision. When we go back and look at verse 15, Proverbs 29, verse 15, it says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. Verse 16 talks about when the wicked are multiplied, transgressions increase, but the righteous shall see their fall. And then verse 17, correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Although verses 15, 16, and 17 are not using the word vision, the thing such as to correct or to reprove is to help stir or to help encourage or to spur vision. In other words, if we can challenge individuals from a wayward life or a lifestyle of sin or a life that's leading them down the wrong road and have a better direction uh, to look up to or to look toward, then we're giving individuals another option. And those of us who are adults and those of us who are leaders of groups need to provide a vision something that gives people an opportunity to not only look at their surroundings and circumstances, but to be able to project beyond their present situation. So when Solomon says where there is no vision, meaning there's nothing for individuals to look forward to, or where leaders have failed to point out direction and steps toward moving uh, from one thing toward another, then people stay in one place and deteriorate. Now, many of us have heard that churches, not just the CME church, but churches, contemporary uh, uh, Protestant churches, modern day churches, and for that matter, all kinds of churches are in a period of decline in membership. We've even heard that some churches have died. I was reading an article many years back when I was pastoring in Alabama, and there was a church, and I won't call the denomination or the name, 
That's not even important, uh, at least at this point. But they had over a million plus dollars in the bank. They had a facility. Uh, the membership was aging. That was one of the th challenges. They were not bringing in anyone new. They had everything you could need as far as a facility, as far as money, etc. But they had a closing celebration of the church because they felt that they couldn't move forward. I, I want to share with you that when we have no vision in place, people die and suffer. Even in times like we're going through right now, where there's a coronavirus. Those of us that are leaders, if we're not casting vision and helping individuals to see beyond their situation, we're allowing people to be uh, in states of depression. Uh, we're not helping to offer options where individuals can feel stimulated spiritually, uh, encouraged to get up and to move forward. People die. They become stagnant and not able to move forward. That moves us from Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. And may we turn our attention now to Habakkuk chapter 2. If you look here, and of course I'm going to read the key verse and then go back and look at some other items. It may take you a moment. Habakkuk is uh, past your major prophets. We know of Isaiah, folk like Jeremiah and Ezekiel, uh, you know, Daniel. Th these are major large books. And then if you go over toward Amos, and then we start getting to smaller books like Jonah, Micah, and then after Nahum, Habakkuk. And when we look at Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2, it says this. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he or she or they may run that readeth it. Now, there are three components in here. We're going to highlight it, and you might want to write this down. Write the vision, make it plain, and when people receive it, they can run with it. Write the vision, make it plain, and then when people have it, they can run with it. But, but let's look at verse 1, though. I will stand upon my watch. That simply says that people who are leading got to be in place. I know we're in this time of COVID, but it does not excuse us just because we're at home or not doing in person that we can just take our hands off of our ministries and off of our work and off of our jobs and off of our careers and just sit back and, and not have some type of routine or discipline about moving forward and and, 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 and accepting the challenge of, of, of persisting and pressing and moving forward. So we have to still stand in the place that God has called us. And I don't mean just physically. I'm just saying, you know, be on your post. Be on your cue. And then I will stand up on my watch and set me up on the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. So we're not on in place to minister to others. We're also in this period of watching, waiting, and working on the Lord. Our ear is focused on uh, being attentive that when the Lord speaks to us, even in times like these, and giving us clarity and giving us steps on the things we need to do so that we can move forward and help other individuals, we got to be in place. Look, I know it's a struggle. Uh, I've been blessed to have been sent back here again. This is the seventh year uh, here at Carter Metropolitan. I thank God for it. And no doubt it's a struggle. Uh, it's a good struggle. We're doing great things. But right now I'm, I'm really concerned about how we do ministry for our children and youth going forward. I've always been concerned about that. But even more so now because we're not able to be in person. So it requires an extra added effort, extra intentionality, if I can say it that way to ensure that we have ministries in place that are helping them biblically and spiritually and morally, especially in times like these. So I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord and I'm praying, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching what's going on with young people, even my, 
my own sons and and listening to parents and listening to the challenges in the communities and with the families and in the school system. And I'm saying, Lord, what is it that you need us to do? Well, God is slowly revealing. In fact, some translations of scriptures don't use the word vision. They use the word revelation. Now I'm reading from the King James Version. It does say vision. And some uh, the NIV uses the word revelation that God will reveal. And I'm looking for God to reveal by any and every way possible through dreams, through praying, through uh, listening to others and hearing a deeper voice, which is not theirs, as God speak to that inner, that inner ear, if I could call it that. When God blesses or reveals or unveils the direction that needs to take place uh, in the leader, uh, and also in the leadership, it's very important that we take time to, to write down what it is that God gives to us. Now, allow me to share this with you because it is very serious. I can recall my second appointment where I was pastoring and the church was growing. Uh, in fact, we were really being progressive and things were happening very fast. God would show me things and I put it out. God would reveal things and I would put it out. And then there were a couple of times when some of the things that God was showing me and I was clear about it, it didn't get done the way that I was seeing it. So what God helped me to realize was this. When God gives us a vision, whether it be to the individual or to a group, but definitely to a leader. The difficult part is not writing it down. The challenge is where the scriptures say make it plain. The first thing we write it down, people can see it, that's the what. But the how-to becomes the challenge. And so I began to learn as a leader that when there is a vision revealed from the Lord, a work that God has given to the group, that the second step is to take time to make it plain. That's very hard. It's very hard in the sense that it takes work, it takes time of knowing who the vision is for, it takes time understanding those individuals and perhaps sometime inviting them to become a part of the envisioning the process and how it should be laid out and played out so that others can grab hold of it. The way you receive something as a leader may not be the way other folk will receive it. So when we put the work in and repositioning, whether, this, whether it's using a sketch, PowerPoint, uh, now we're in a time of Zoom and GoToMeet, webinars, Facebook, you name it. Whatever it may be, we have to use it in order to get the steps of that vision across so that people can know, which is that third part. First part is right. Second part, make it plain. The third part is that when people have it, they run with it. And that's what Habakkuk has said here. Make it plain upon tables, uh, some scriptures say tablets, that the person may read it and, and also run with it. So what is also helping us realize, when people can conceptualize, when they can see clearly from us as leaders, and we all fall at times, and I know I have, because we can get something from the Lord that can be plain as day, but it's plain as day to you, not everyone else. So we have to spend time in, in fleshing out, uh, uh, making palatable, uh, so that others, regardless of their age, young, elderly, regardless of their profession, career, job, upbringing, socioeconomic situation, that when it's for the people, it has to be designed for the people. Now, on one hand, you have some people, even when they see it, they may not do it. But that's not the issue. The reality is, according to the scripture, that there will be some people who will be convinced, who will become convicted, who will become committed, who will consent, consist, and move forward in making that vision to become a reality. Well, look, I want to stop here for today and just thank God that 
Uh, we can talk a little bit about vision. And remember, we're coming into a season at the beginning of the conference year. We're working on our calendars and our budgets. And I'm hoping that uh, as we share vision, uh, we didn't give any specific nuggets in this case. We're just laying a foundation so that uh, folk will know that vision and then virtual and victory are items that we want to focus on as we move forward in the season that we're dealing with right now. Well, may we take time to pray. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, keep www.cartermetroftw.com in mind uh, for worship. And we want to thank God for the back to school uh, celebration, virtual presentation this past week. And we hope all our young people are doing well as we prepare and transition for another school year. May we take time to pray. Eternal Father, we want to thank you that uh, we have time to 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 receive revelation from you so that we can receive direction from you. But then as leaders and individuals who are uh, serving congregations and leading groups, whatever they may be, help us to be able to take the vision and put it in a format that other individ individuals can grab hold of it, be excited about it, be able to, to activate it, and encourage others to do the same. Well, God, we love you. We give you all the praises, and we do give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to see you another time.